Okay students, today is a snow day so uh, since we're missing the lab again uh, this is the option that I chose to, to do and pursue so that way you can do the experiment at home on your own or if you still feel uncomfortable doing this at home by yourself you come to lab next Tuesday and, and complete it with the rest of the class but for now what we're going to do is, is I'm going to give you a little introduction to the lab and, and give you the experimental data to go along with it so you can do the experiment at home um, but this experiment is dealing with kinetics and we're going to focus on the iodine clock reaction and this is focusing on part one specifically now as we talked about in lecture uh, kinetics is just the study of rates of which chemical reactions occur and so we're going to be watching a reaction that goes through a, a, a clockwise series and there's two main there's two reactions there's the main reaction and then there's the secondary reaction and then it, then it cycles back through until the reaction completes and so the main reaction is going to include uh, the two iodides and you can follow this in your lab introduction as well as we go through it but it's going to take iodide ions it's going to react with the persulfate ions and it's going to form two products and one of the products that's formed uh, is iodine. Uh, the iodine will then go into the secondary reaction uh, which is called the clock reaction and that iodine will then react with thiosulfate S2O3 2 minus to form iodide and, and a byproduct of that which this second product doesn't really matter it's it's this product that makes a difference because if you notice the iodide it actually is the first reactant in the main reaction and so this is where the clock reaction takes place as the iodine reacts with the persulfate forms the iodine the iodine is immediately consumed with thiosulfate and forms the iodide and then it discontinues on a cycle until eventually all of the thiosulfate runs out okay so this is going to run out first once this runs out the iodine then re reacts with starch which starch is being used as an indicator and the, and the solution turns blue uh, and that's indicative of when the reaction itself is, is completed so uh, now the objective is to is to observe this reaction under various conditions and we're going to change the concentration specifically and what we're going to do is determine the order of reaction with respect to persulfate so to persulfate which is the S2 O8 2 minus compound and then after we've determined that we will, we will then determine the rate constant for the experiment so there's, there's two there's two parts to this the first part is to determine the order of reaction and then the second part will be determine the rate constant for this overall reaction now what we can do is we can write a rate law for this and the rate is equal to K times concentration of iodide and I'm going to go ahead and give you the order of reaction with respect to iodide and it's one and so then we have your persulfate S2O8 2 minus uh, to some n power so you're going to be determining n and k from this process now uh, the one other piece of information that we need to know is we also need to need to know the rate and so I'm going to go ahead and give that to you and this is at the bottom of of, of the first page in the experiment uh, so we write rate is equal to 9.091 times 10 to the minus 4 molar per time we don't know what we're going to do is we're going to measure the time aspect and we're going to plug it back into the equation in a little bit uh, once we figure out the order of reaction so and the rest of this is the same for the moment. 
All right. Uh, so the the main part here is we we need to set up the experiments, and we need to run through the the reaction. Now, uh, I want you to to pay attention to the procedure. I'm not going to go through the details within the procedure. You can look at that and at your own leisure whenever you're working through the experiment. But I want you to focus on there's two separate beakers. Uh, there's beaker one and then there's beaker two. Uh, beaker one contents is going to vary throughout the experiment, meaning that we're going to change the concentrations of, of, of what we're adding into beaker one. But beaker two, the contents is going to remain the same throughout the entire experiment. So we're going to alter beaker one and keep beaker two cons constant as far as its concentration is concerned. All right, now, uh, some of the uh, some of the data that we're going to collect from this, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about the data here before we get into the calculations and the, how to determine the ordered reaction and the rate constant. Uh, now I'm going to give you two sets of data. All right, uh, that data is going to be for two different trials. Okay, so you would do three trials and to begin with, uh, but here's the data for for the first trial. So there's, there's four runs within the experiment because you're going to alter the, the concentrations in four different trials, four different experiments. So for this, uh, for run one, it's going to be a total of 45 seconds. For run two, it's going to be 54 seconds. Run three will be one minute and 23 seconds. And then for run four, it's gonna be two minutes and 31 seconds. All right, so that's the experimental day that we get for trial one. And then here's the experimental day for trial two. All right, so again, we're gonna have 46 seconds counted for run one. We'll have 55 seconds counted for experiment two. Uh, we'll have one minute and 29 seconds for run for run three. And the last one will be two minutes and 35 seconds. All right, now, what you need to do here is, is you need to average these times. All right, we're, gonna, we're only gonna do this in one set of, set of numbers. And so you need to average these times for each run that you see here. Now, once we've done that, uh, once you're going to do is you're going to make a graph, and this and it explains this, and and the analysis part of of the introduction. So we're going to make a graph of log of one over time, which we just measured here. Okay, so that'll be the average. So you have to take the log of one over time, and that'll be your on your y on your y-axis. And then you're going to make a, you're going to take the log of the persulfate concentration. Now, if you pay attention to the beaker one, the persulfate concentration changes throughout the experiment. Okay, so I'm going to give you an, ex uh, an example as how to calculate the concentration of the persulfate uh, for run one, and you also are going to need to know the, the concentration of the iodide as well. Uh, so you can go back up and calculate and use the rate law in just a few minutes. But so the example for the concentration, so calculating the concentration of the persulfate, you're going to take the initial concentration of persulfate, which is equal to 0.15 molar, and if you look at the experiment one, all right, the contents will be 10 milliliters of, of, of the 0.15 molar potassium sulfate. Don't worry about the potassium because it's just a spectator ion. It's not involved in the, in the reaction. So you, we're going to convert the 10 milliliters into liters, and so that equals to 0 0.01 liters. You're going to multiply that by the 0.15 molar, and so what we got to do is we have to factor out the dilution. We, we need to include the dilution factor in the total volume of the beakers once you mix them together. 
is 27.5 milliliters and we're going to convert that into liters so that's going to be 0 0.0275 liters so notice the liters cancel out here and you end up with a, a concentration of 0 0.05454 molar after the reaction is, has been mixed together so for the iodide however the iodide stays constant because it's in beaker tube so we don't have to worry about calculating it except just one time so for the iodide we use 10 milliliters of 0.22 molar again I'm going to convert the milliliters into liters and so you have 0.01 liters times 0.22 molar divided by the total volume again which is 0.0275 liters and that gives you a concentration of 0 0.08 molar. Remember that this concentration here is constant. It does not change. What you'll need to do is this particular concentration was for run 1. So you'll need to calculate the concentration for run 2, 3, and 4 for the persulfate. And then you come back in here, you do the calculation, and you make your plot. Okay, now what you're going to get from this is you'll get some graph uh, making sure that you do log 1 over time and then log of the persulfate. Now time, just to be specific here, you need to make sure that you use seconds for that. So make sure you convert your 1 minute and 29 seconds, 2 minutes, 35 seconds. Whatever this averaged out to be, make sure you convert it to seconds completely. You don't need minutes and seconds both in that calculation. That would be an error. All right. So after you've done that, uh, what you'll do is you'll, you'll get a graph. And this is just a generic graph. Your graph might look different from mine. All right. So let's say, for example, that the data turns out to be like this. And you get a, a nice linear graph like this. Hopefully you get a linear graph. All right. So what you need to do here is you need to figure out the slope here. All right, slope all right, is actually going to be equal to N, which is the order of the persulfate. So once you determine slope, you're going to know the order of reaction for persulfate. All right. And now, once you determine the order of reaction for persulfate, then what you do is you come back in here, and you're going to calculate the rate constant. All right, we're going to calculate K for each experiment. Now, a rate constant is constant, so it should be fairly same throughout all the experiments. You're going to average K for all once you've calculated each experiment. All right, and one thing you need to pay attention to is you need to pay attention to units. All right, you need to pay attention to the units. 4K and the overall order of the reaction. That's going to be important. Now, again, I'm going to, you need to make sure you plug in your concentration for iodide. You'll plug in your concentration for sulfate for each experiment for run one, run two, run three, run four. And don't, do not forget to change the time. If you forget to change the time, then your rate constant's not going to be what you expect it to be. It's not going to be the same. It's actually going to deviate because you're using the incorrect time. So make sure that you adjust the time with respect for run one, run two, run three, and run four. All right. So uh, for this experiment, I want you guys to do this at, at home on your own. This is for the Thursday lab. If you want to come in on Tuesday and do the lab so you get to see what happens, uh, you're more than welcome to. But this lab is due before you leave on break on Tuesday. All right, so you must turn this in by 2.40 on Tuesday. So, all right, if you guys have any questions, please email me. Thanks.